night, ladies and gentlemen, all everyone around and in between. We are Debate Sensei. This is the limited preparation edition of our series where we talk about things that are relevant to competitive limited preparation debate tournaments for, of debate. We have from SDSU, Tim CB. Matt Mashapiro, the attack librarian Esquire. All right, Tim's attack librarian. I like it. I like it. I'm okay. retainer. Okay. I'm not changing it. <laughs> and today we are talking, we are doing a deep dive. All right. And what we do here is we take a topic that people are discussing, not necessarily, you know, ripped from the headlines, not, not always, you know, uh, talking about right now, but things that were, um, uh, you know, discussed and are controversial and just take a look at some of the arguments that they're making. Um, the topic for this week is the removal of controversial monuments. All right. What was that? Reverse the, the, sorry. Removal of controversy. Removal. Yeah. All right. Did I say reversal? No, you said reversal. You cut out for a second. Oh, okay. So for me, this is a, uh, I, one of the things I like about deep dive is we get to come up with various ways that resolutions might be phrased. Yeah. Around That's where that. I start. So totally. it could be something like the U S federal government should remove all Confederate monuments from public lands. Right, okay. because it's got to have the right jurisdiction. Like you can't take it out of private property, whatever. Um, or we, you could dictate particular states. So like there are far more uh, Confederate monuments. Uh, I'm already parametricizing down to like, like controversial. I'm picking to be like those yeah. that are uh, typically like Confederate uh, war generals and whatever. Um, there are more of them in North Carolina than there are in the state of Washington. So you could just uh, say the state of North Carolina will do such and such a thing. So I think mm -hmm. most of your resolutions probably will still come at the federal level because they exist in a lot of states. Uh, if it's a, a policy type thing and you can't take down those statues from private lands. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, maybe we need to consult our, our resident attack librarian on this one. Uh, if there is a an incitement of uh, violence, right? So like talk about like freedom of speech. Um, if one could argue that a statue of Robert E. Lee is an incitement of violence, not like making the claim that it is, but if someone did argue that and like persuaded a judge to claim that, could they take down a statue from mm -hmm. private lands because that oh, private I entity is acting in a way as to incite violence? You want to know something funny? So I w I, I've done a couple moot court competitions in law school. You're a terrible lawyer. I can't believe I pay your retainer. <laughs> and at one of those, uh, the the it's a competition and, and it's just like a it's like debate it's like uh, very much what we're talking about it's what got me going that way was uh, one of the subjects it was a con law subject and it was about monuments being posted on behalf of a police union okay and it was like they were putting uh, large crosses on the side of the road mm. if that makes sense and what they were using as an example of why it should be allowed because the union is a private company. It's not, it's not the state, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the question is, we're talking about private land, all right? Uh, uh, they were saying, hey, when people die on the side of the road, you know, oftentimes people will go and, and put a cross and, you know, it's small and you could tell like a family put out, you know, some flowers and a cross. You can imagine that little scenario. And they were saying, because people do that, we should be allowed to put a 10-foot cross up. Uh, and I believe it's based off a real case, and it's uh, terrible. I don't know the case name, but uh, the long story short is that that's right down the the that's a strike on you know kind of what you're asking me. The the question is, can a private citizen put a you know in that context, it's religious, but you're yeah. talking about you're talking about uh, yeah. you know uh, Robert okay. E. Lee statues. So it comes the it answer. Comes the limitation. The of answer is. The question in that question is, does it look like the police, does it look like the government is making that statement? And if the question, if the answer is the police union, that's, that's a pretty, that might look like the government. Whereas if it's on the, you know, uh, Dixie will rise again museum owned by Tim Seavey and in, incorporated from the previous episode. All right. The private prison court for conglomerate, then yeah, maybe they. You can't take that down. It doesn't look like the government is saying it. If the government, if it appears that the government is saying it, and and it, and it, there's good reason for it, there is good reason why that private land would be regulated 
for, for something like a statue that incites violence. But if it's not, if it's obviously a private, if it's Walmart starts doing that, no. That, I mean, that, the government is free speech. That's the real free speech when the government so, can't do it. Yeah. So I think, uh, and that actually leads to some interesting uh, negative arguments because if you're talking about ownership of the land on which the monuments are, because there are, right. um, it, it opens up like disadvantages would be that if you start removing those uh, monuments, all that's going to happen is people sort of transfer that ownership into private hands. So like still means profit. And that means like profit. profit well, you profit say people, the really government are. transferring. Yeah. Well, so, like state governments. So see, for instance, that's... Stone Mountain is like one of those examples. Okay. So Jared, tell me the example, but then I've, I've got a question that follows in that same line that I was asking about before. Well, see, Courtesy. like, so yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think if I'm on the negative, what I'm going to say, I feel it's a little bit difficult to what carve out some ground. Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain. What's Stone is, Mountain? What's the resolution? Georgia. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> right. So uh, Stone Mountain is in Georgia. It's a, uh, a relief carving right in the side of a mountain. So it's not a, it's not a statue. People always think about statues getting taken down. Those are easy. What I, what I would go for on the neg would be what are the most complicated ones that you have to remove and make the debate about that, all right? So how do you remove a carving in the side of a freaking mountain? Are you, like, just dynamiting that stuff? Like, yeah, what? I mean, George Washington owned, uh, you know, a slave or two, so should we take down Mount Rushmore? You, right, and it, it does open up Mount Rushmore, right, you know, as, yeah. uh, as, as, you know, sort of the most visible one of that. But I like the Stone Mountain one because – there's been discussions about how to treat that particular monument. Should we like, are we going to scrub it one way or like we're going to, or we're going to like plaster over it or do we add something now that is sort of a contrary part of it now? It's like we add, it's like that still exists, but right next to it could be other symbols that are anti-Confederate. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 now you're adding to the monument rather than removing it. And the reason I like doing those ones is because I think it really captures the complexity of the best intentions of both sides. Right? You're, Jared, Jared, you're right. And, the, and, the, and there's... Yeah, the number of monuments are just like statues. You can remove statues. You can relocate them. They can be put into museums. All those arguments about history and stuff like that go away. But the complicated ones are the more interesting ones to me. The, the, a lot of monument cases that I've learned about through my moot court experience, basically... Mm -hmm. uh, about monuments being removed uh where there are monuments very often uh, on government land that indicate like a religion that's a big one the religion um as long as the government allows all the religions to kind of put a statue up then that's different than if it's exclusively one so there are uh and by the way this is, all goes to crap when there's like carvings of the ten commandments in the supreme court and stuff like that but Generally, outside monuments, like you think of a monument in like a monument park out in Capitol Hill or something, there are monuments that are Christian and it's put up by the Boy Scouts on federal land. But there's also, you know, a, 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 a land available for a bunch of other religions to put their monuments up also. So, Jared, this kind of goes to what you're saying right now, where it's kind of like, you know, if you're allowed to kind of put lots of these things up that are they kind of bring it in, you know in those cases the proximity is kind of a thing where it's like in this little park you can see that we represent a lot of people here but you know mount rushmore you know uh on another angle just to attack the case here it's like what is incitement you know incitement means you cause people to cause violence you know you you direct people to cause violence is george washington owning a slave a incitement of a riot it could be it could not be i i mean but that 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 being the threshold for what yeah has to what has to be conveyed you know to to someone to cause violence that you yeah, know yeah. i'm, I'm I, challenging I that, that. Yeah. i'm challenging that like so yeah. Huey, Huey Newton was um, one of the leaders of the Black Panthers, and he went to some a lot city. of slaves, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he I went said to two. A, a, a city and had a speech right beforehand about, you know, you know, he, um, I forget exactly what he said, but like he might have even said the word riot during the speech. Mm -hmm. And then there was right. a riot afterwards. He was not right. held liable for that speech. I don't see why right. a statue would be. So, so well, if you had, however, though, like on a 
call it for just the continuation of this question because I want to understand like how the law would dictate something like this. If you were to have a statue of a burning cross, right? Like let's take like a very extreme example of a like actually violent happened, yeah. organization, right? Can a private citizen put that on their lawn that's for public viewing, granted stolen private land, and mm -hmm. is that protected by their own free speech? Even if like we're now getting to the, the territory of like, well, that looks like literally the incitement to violence or like they, they put like a gallows up or something like that in front of their house. Like these are literally like violent symbols that mm -hmm. feels like inciting violence. Is that protected as a you know form of, of speech? I would wager not. So now the question just becomes like, is a statue of Robert E. Lee the same thing as a statue of a burning cross or a statue of gallows? Like, uh, yeah, there, there's black, Go there's ahead. Virginia v. Black, 2003. Okay. Um, Tell me that where, case law, Jared. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, Supreme Court upheld a Virginia statute making it illegal to burn a cross in public with the intent to intimidate others. Um, and there, I guess there was also an, it, it invalidated a provision of the same law that allowed a jury to infer intent to intimidate from the act of burning a cross in public. Interesting. OK, so so there, there exists like it is a piece of wood and some gasoline. Right. But it is a symbol that incites violence or it is a symbol for intimidation and like white supremacy and racism. That's where yeah. the argument is still made by groups that are saying like these statues are lionizing those exact same tenets. Like the, the difference between a statue of Robert E. Lee and the, a burning cross is null. Like they are the same thing is what like some of those arguments are being made. So that's where I'm asking like, if that existed on private property, can the government strike that down? Or can all of these you know, monuments that are being taken out of the state of Virginia just be relocated to citizens lawns that want them to be on private lands like because if that's the case then you really don't get not if they have an hoa let me tell you that <laughs> right now they will be it's not the government that's going to be coming for them it's the 500 hundred dollar day fine uh i mean yeah tim i think we got to be careful what's the can you say the resolution again we don't have it just plastered yeah, on here I'm the whole time if it were the you know the u.s federal government should remove um all Monu like confederate monuments or monuments from public property I'm saying well, the only the property. only power they have is over public property i mean i'm just telling that's the whole thing i'm telling that's you if, the, if walmart was to do that they can't stop walmart from doing that they can't i mean no the answer is no all right walmart can suffer the consequences of what that might do to their business yeah. i mean i mean uh, I believe uh that walmart would sell clan robes if it made them any dose of profit and, and by the way by the way what you're what you're saying is this if Walmart puts up a uh, a, a, a obelisk or what's that thing a a, a, lith, a thing that just says come to you know if, if Walmart puts up a sign at every store that says on such a date we're gonna go to the Capitol and storm it <laughs> that is different than putting up a statue of Robert E Lee so right now is what you're talking you are now just talking what is convincing like what is a symbol versus what is a statement or what is a directive so no what's incitement a private right? citizen cannot a, a, no one can say we're gonna start a riot on this date no one's allowed to do that you're not allowed to do that yeah, whether that, you're that, private that, citizen or not but putting up a, a statue of robert e lee these are two different monuments i mean a monument is not every monument you know uh I'm trying to think of the well, like word planning for it. out a location and a date is different than just right, a right. Project. Like that's a that's a coordinated one yeah. of those would clearly be incitement. Bring your guns. We're going to the Capitol on X date, and we're gonna kill everyone in our sight. Okay, if it said that on a big stone thing, twenty five feet high at every Costco, that would be true incitement. I mean, that would be like they are trying to use this monument to cause a riot uh, uh, per se you know per, exact like on its face now the layer the layer between that and saying uh any 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 controversial statue i'm sure we keep sticking with these confederate generals but i'm sure there's more than that but like uh it's a good example by the way though i mean that's a great example they're the, they're and a the lot of ones that, are, that get the most right right now it's true. right no it's true it's true the question though is is that incitement because that's not the same threshold yeah. as that uh, you know monolith that we're talking about sorry go ahead oh no, yeah i don't think it'd be i don't think it'd be a good uh strategy in the supreme court and would not be a good strategy in debate um yeah 
to go Pu- that. public but land though but public public yeah. land is good yeah, enough yeah, there's a lot of public land statues and like and so <laughs> on the affirmative i think the most strategic thing for you to do is confederate statues on public land because the statues is like a hidden clarification that mm-hmm. gets you out of the carvings right you know what i mean so like stone mountain now is not part of it so if you want to be a little sneaky about it then just mm-hmm. specify Define statues it. and just and and, and parametricize yeah so okay. um but if i if i was on the negative i'd be like no no see you are ignoring some of the most complex ones in, in, in this debate and those ones you know um if you remove all the other statues, you only increase the 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 uh, symbolism of the ones that remain. So we we need to talk about things like Stone Mountain. Um, mm-hmm. You can't ignore stuff like that. I think that's, that's yeah, cool. it's, it's a, yeah, it's a cool yeah. strategy. Yeah, wow. uh, and one thing I like about the Stone Mountain thing is that now you can start making um, correlations to other uh, examples of that, like when the Taliban uh, basically dynamited all these buddhas of bamiyan um so they're like these carvings that were in 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 the region and because they are of a religion that they believe to be evil you know not islam you know what i mean and so they felt that the, these were very controversial things and they just they just destroyed them you know what i mean it's kind of like it's like well they they have the the right to do that and you can say that that you know the the existence of those statues offended them but it does kind of like when when it's something like that where it's just like we're just going to destroy it it's like i want to have that discussion and like that i'm sad too that I, I took down reasonable person for this one because there's an aspect of this where at least uh, uh, as far as the laws go in this country that like it's not so much if you know a radicalized you know person who saw a buddha and interpreted that to be the death of everything i believe in so i must destroy it that may not be what we call reasonable okay and 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 so what when in these in the federal we're talking about the courts and the cases that we're talking about with monuments in the u.s like so much of it is like would a reasonable observer understand that to be government land would the reasonable observer understand that to be a religious uh uh, advocating for a religion or tearing a religion down if so then you failed but if you don't then you know uh as far as private citizens go a no and then two it's all debatable but just to kind of clarify the interpretation of a person as I see Buddha, and I think that means I am wrong about my faith, and everything is bad. like. If you really think that, then yeah, maybe they they reasonably thought that it was destruction of me and everything I hope to create in the world. But that's not maybe what they meant when they put the Buddha up, or what people understand nope. it to mean who aren't either of those things. So good transition into what seems to be, and I, I hope this isn't a straw man. I'm not intentionally trying to make this a straw man, but what I see to be the folks defending keeping statues is they are historical figures. This has historical value. uh, And therefore that That, that seems to be the argument. Uh, I don't, I don't mean to set this up as a straw man. I would like to hear if there's more justification for that, but it seems like it's kind of the beginning and the end of the argument of like, well, this person was historically significant. Yeah. You can't, you can't erase history is like, you know, that's the the argument. Absolutely. And, it's coming back on itself, that yeah, argument yeah, where it's like... We made. So, okay, with that in mind, what is the intrinsic value of remembering an historical figure beyond lionizing them? Yeah. Right? Like, we don't keep statues of Hitler around so that we remember Hitler was a bad guy. Like, everyone can remember that Hitler was bad. Now, there still do exist, like, I think when you have, like... Uh, People who think he was a good guy. People do exist. Yeah. Well, so I mean, we do have places, though, like Museums of Tolerance, where there exist like Nazi paraphernalia and like Nazi propaganda. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is we're keeping this so that we remember and also giving it the context of like this is an entire museum dedicated to the evils that were done by it. We're not destroying mm-hmm. all Nazi memorabilia and iconography. We are keeping it to like memorialize these things. Right. But we are not continuing to lionize it. When you have a picture of someone that is like a giant dude on a horse and it is the center of a Evan town square. Yeah. That's kind of lionizing something as opposed to giving context to it. So, Jared, your point earlier of like, what, what do you do to Stone Mountain? Like, how do you give additional context or like put other figures around it? That's an interesting example of like how you go about that. But I think for a debate round, I would bring it down to like any of these monuments, statues, what have you, that are up 
without like even if you put a little placard being like and by the way this was a bad guy but here's still on his magnificent horse like that still is lionizing and aggrandizing like a villain in history an evil person so i don't really buy the but we have to remember history i don't buy that i think that's a thin ass weak argument that doesn't have an actual impact of, like why that's a good thing like why we need to remember robert e lee remember that he was a villain so like make a statue of robert e lee get his ass kicked or something and that's actually more <laughs> yeah like cool all right like let's replace all this iconography of like them doing racist things and then getting killed like that's maybe a different conversation to be had right yeah like so w when you start getting into this discussion i think it does open up a little bit of opportunity maybe for a little bit of humor as well about like what be uh, careful <laughs> yeah yeah so, but, like what if but yes what if the what if the counter plan was no, let's not remove robert e lee's um statue just let's make him modify killing it. a person yeah let's, let's modify it so he has a noticeably small penis <laughs> like and now now it's not like the romans did to the statue of david right and so no, and, and so that's all when, whenever you talk about lionizing you know i'm like okay let's stop lionizing them then you know what i mean it's like it doesn't no. mean you have to take it down right so this is a discussion about what it symbolizes and when like does removing of that stuff um does that symbolism is that symbolism good does it do anything um and so you could start getting it, it, and when you through that joke you could actually start carving out a little bit of critical area right that about the removal of these statues is um sort of a ridiculous debate to have because it's oh it, it's not really starting a discussion it's kind of ending a discussion you know what i mean um and it's kind of like all right now we've removed it you can you can shut up um and so uh yeah like that that's where i, I feel myself going and it kind of helps taking a, a light-hearted counterplan to it I, i've done that before where i use counterplans to kind of illustrate a, a humorous point but I'll, at the same time it leads into yeah, that's delicate yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. There's obviously plenty of documentaries, research, and understanding to know that these things, when certain, you know, when seen, it, it is a it reminder that like we hold these people in high regard on Absolutely. their high horse, as That's, Tim said. So, like the, so, so the, yeah. there, there's no question that the removal. Uh, I, I don't. I have no problem with it. I mean, uh, honestly, I don't care honestly yeah, i mean that's what it is it. so so i i don't think the, the i think the intent of the people who built half of these statues happened you know a hundred almost a hundred years later uh for completely different reasons you know than 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 remembering the generals or something like that you yeah, know i think there's right, alternative right. motives for putting them up but Precisely. but that being right. said like go, go ahead sorry so the the majority of the, the confederate statues that exist around the south were erected between like 1903 and like 1963, well after yeah. the Confederacy, but definitely yeah. in the, the the awful center of Jim Crow. So like your worst era of we are going to put up during the great the surge of the KKK, where they're in the they're, there's they have congressmen and, and uh, Congress people and all kinds of people and just you know millions of members in the in the country. Yeah, during that time was when mo a lot of these statues are put up, and that's kind of where it's kind of like, look, you know, this is very much a coordinated effort to to remind people walking around in a town square what's going on. So. And yes, shooting. removal is a is a good yeah. reason, and and and, Jer and and Tim, I mean, as far as public private, you know, there are repercussions for people who do things in private on private land. Okay, and that's kind of you know one of those things might be uh, uh, vandalism. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like if your statue is causing you know people to to riot against it, then. The question is, it's like reverse incitement or something like that. I don't know what that would be called, but well, I, I uh, think that there's a reasonable um, negative argument, and it, it, I don't, I'm not particularly persuaded by it, but I do think that it, it's fairly likely that yeah. the people that are offended by the removal of these monuments will just find reasons to be offended by monuments that they disagree with. All right. So what I mean is, like, it would be almost like a politics disadvantage, but it's like, yeah. a, like, like a petty disadvantage. People will be petty, and they'll they'll start just removing other stuff. It's a bit of a slippery slope. You know, I'll, you know, 
Yeah. So like I'm an sorry. example would be like Harvey Milk. There's mm -hmm. conservative organizations that basically uh, accused him of um, raping 15 year old boys. And I don't mm -hmm. know what the evidence for that, those claims are, but uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if those are true, then that would be a reason to remove them. If they're not true, they're still going to use them as reasons. And they're just going to say that they are true. Right. And, and so um, it, I'm not a fan of slippery slope arguments, but I, I can't ignore that that seems like a fairly reasonable, predictive thing that could happen in the real world. Or, or a federal land that has like a Gettysburg Museum on it, right? Like a Gettysburg, they, they preserved, let's say, a battlefield or something where there's like cannonball fire and whatever damage done. Uh, you know, is that a monument to the South? Or is that like a preservation of like the history as we're understanding it to be? Because because I do believe there are probably you know Auschwitz things like that. Like why why is that still there? Why can't yeah, you no, so go that, on a really plane and fly there and visit? Yeah. Well, you know, on one hand, yeah. it could be for Nazis to go like you know worship, or on the other hand, it's for you know the world. You know, I I you know I have some b Jewish blood in my in my body. I've gone to a concentration camp in Europe before and was like, damn, this is crazy. So, uh, you know, I think there is some value. I guess is what I'm saying into having preserving certain aspects of history that don't that could maybe be a monument i mean i don't know if that's a monument per se but i just mean to say that it is like a yeah. physical location that exists that's preserved that's taken care of and someone's washing the floors in auschwitz so that c people can go check it out still but i just i, I mean that's that, that's just kind of a the counterpoint i think to the most quintessential you know robert e lee statue in the middle of you know an atlanta you know roundabout or something like that right right, right. so i i Context is the important one, right, Matt? Like we were talking yeah. about before, like a statue of someone looking majestic on a horse in the middle of town square versus like, yeah. here's the context around this and we're telling the story of what awful thing this the history. what it is. Right. Yeah. That whole story surrounding it is the important difference. Like that's what makes a symbol mean one thing versus mean another. So it's not a, a monolith that says, here's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. argument is made that a statue is still a representative and a message and a symbol that has meaning and mm -hmm. has some intent behind it. That mm -hmm. is what people are arguing of why things should come down versus not. So uh, shared your point of like a slippery slope though, I think where it, uh, I see the argument frequently terminate is on Thomas Jefferson, right? Like very famous, owned a ton of slaves uh, and yet has a literal gigantic monument for him right. in, in many of them around the country, but like the Jefferson monument or Jefferson Memorial is enormous in Washington. Should that be taken down or something like that? I think is where right. I hear the termination of that slippery slope. Like, what's next? We're gonna, or like Matt says, like blow up the, um, you know, Mount Rushmore. Like, if that's the termination of it, should we stop listening to R. Kelly's music? That's the yeah. question. I mean, like, okay, can people do bad? Can I watch Kevin watch Spacey and enjoy it? I don't know. Okay, I don't. I like Kevin Spacey's to, movies. I don't like Kevin Spacey. For another bit, but so like context becomes an important thing. So maybe it's like for those monuments that mm -hmm. people find like, yeah, we are still aggrandizing Thomas Jefferson for the great things he did and completely like washing over the awful things that he did, like mm -hmm. add to those monuments. Like, all right, there's an additional plaque that talks about all of the like, you know, slaves that he owned and like name whatever the, um, you know, mm -hmm. contributive uh, piece or whatever the, the, the just piece would be to like add context and add, you know, pieces to that. Um, also, one other piece, uh, there was a, a good joke that Pete Davidson had. It was like on your point, Matt, of like, Man, the problem is I don't like what Kanye's done, but I love Kanye's music. You know, right, about, right, right, every right. Every time I listen to a Kanye song, I have to donate a dollar to a charity right. to Jewish people. Like that may not be the best yeah, example for good. like the the Confederate generals, but it's definitely like Route much more. Right. And there's there's right. things where it's like, yeah. look, they did something. I mean, they did a lot of bad things. They did some good things. They did all kinds of things. So like, uh, I don't know. Go into like you can take a percentage of the money that goes to ticket sales to see the Jefferson Memorial or whatever, or yeah. Like yeah. tours of it or whatever. And that goes to, um, you know, the Center for Civil Liberties or something like that. You can take yeah. it like, a, to a charity that supports the alternative side. Interesting way that could be balanced. Really quick, if anyone wants to learn more, there's a the, the monument case is a Supreme Court case called Van Orden, V A N O R D E N, and then the big speech case is called the Lemon Test. So I've been uh, Supreme Court Lemon, like the word Lemon Test, and it should. <laughs> Give you free speech information if you want to. If you want to know, they they came back in my head at the end of the episode.
All right, everybody. Uh, that is our time on this one. Uh, it, it is interesting. Um, and so glad we were able to talk it out. Uh, we are Matt, Tim and Jared for Debate Sensei. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you.